today. Thank you. I don't have slides for you today, but what I do have is the Bible and the word for you. I'm going to ask you to change to 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 6. 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 6. It's a familiar verses here, uh, uh, a familiar theme here that we at MDM have uh, sat on for years because there's so much truth here. And uh, I'm going to read to you starting at verse 1. Three days later, when David and his men arrived at, wait, I'm just going to, I got to put some light on this. Let me put some more light on this. Okay, great. Three days later, when David and his men arrived at home in their town of Ziglag, they found the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and Ziklag. They had crushed Ziklag. Ziklag was their home and burnt it to the ground. They had carried off women and children and everyone else without killing anyone. Now, this is David and his men, 600 warriors, 600 men, uh, ran into the wilderness to live in caves before they settled in Ziklag when King Saul was after David. King Saul was jealous of David's success and anointing. And we, we, know, we all know that story. So David fled and made an alliance with Israel's very enemy. I'm, I'm not reading scripture now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. And what he did was David made this alliance to the point that he would fight with the Philistines if Israel came against them. So these 600 men had to be grieved and grumpy and torn. And it actually says they were discontented. They were in debt and they came to David. This was the bottom of the barrel. But David was an amazing leader and David knew how to raise men of God. He was a man maker. And these men went, followed David to fight with the Philistines against Israel. The, the, the generals and colonels of the Philistine said to the king of the Philippines, Philippines, Philistines, uh, that we don't trust David. So the king sent David back home to Ziklag, and this is what they saw riding back home. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. You see, there wasn't a woman or child left in their hometown. Everybody, everybody was taken. And when the Amalekites took women and children, it was not a good thing. Just let your imagination run wild of what they did to, to their wives, women, and their children. David's two wives, David's two wives, um, just need another set of glasses here. Alamon from uh, Jerusalem and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men, those 600 guys, all his men were bitter about losing their sons, daughters, and wives. And they began to talk of stoning him. And here is, here is our main verse today. But David, type that in the chat. But David, but David, go ahead, type it in the chat, please. First Samuel chapter 30, verse six. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Don't you love the buts in scripture? David strengthened himself in the Lord. Hmm. Sit on that. Sit on that. Well, that's what we want to welcome you to. The Strengthen Yourself in the Lord series. Over these next eight weeks, we will discuss what and how we can experience the freedom Christ died for. Because Christ did not come to make men good, guys. He came to make men free.
He came to make men great. You see, that's why if you typed in anywhere from good on down, God wants to make it great. God wants you great every time you think of him. You think of his grace. You think of his power. You think of him flowing through you. You think of your purpose for living in him. Man has three questions. Who am I? Why do I exist? What shall I do? And God answered those, th God answered those three questions. That's why when a man looks for significance, he can only get the whole filled which God created from God himself. And when we put our families, our wives and our children, good things, it, we make God things, they become a bad thing. When we do those things, we place burdens upon those people and things that they were never meant to bear nor able to fulfill inside of us. You see, David had his challenges. David had his challenges. God called him a man after his own heart with all of his challenges. You know why? It doesn't take much of a man to love God, but it does take all you got. In Psalm 103, we find David making no request of God. It's one of the Psalms that he doesn't make a request of God, but he gives it all to God. Let me see if my eyes could read this one. And this is a pretty popular one. And I have my method of my madness to go here to bridge to where I believe the Lord wants us to land today. It says this in Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless that. This is David spirit man speaking to his soul soul meaning mind will and emotion and uh this is david speaking to himself he says bless the lord oh my soul go get him soul go get him soul stop being shy with god's soul be bold that's what he's allowed you to do because of christ on the cross bless the lord oh my soul all that is within me bless his holy name verse two Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Man of God, if you don't know, you can't go from good to great. If you do not know what great looks like, what does great look like? You see, when the rewards of God and the blessing of God are vague to a man, It's almost like a sniper on a rooftop pinning down your greatness and not letting it come out because God specifically tells you what he does here. He taught, what are the benefits? Say benefit, turn to the man next to you in the box next to you and say benefits, benefits. Okay, here's verse three. Who forgives all your iniquities. That's number one. Number two, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your soul with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Isn't that amazing? Is, 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 does that get you pumped? It, it certainly gets me pumped. And I'm telling you guys, uh, if you get this, your life will change. Now you say, Scott, you know, I'm not David. And matter of fact, I don't even understand or relate to those theological benefits that we read in Psalm 103. I hear you. I hear you. Man of God, though, this, what David is doing, he's giving to God and finding, he's praising God. He's not asking God of anything. He's claiming this. He's not asking him for healing. He's not asking him uh, to make his, youth, his uh, vigor return. He's not asking him anything like that. He's claiming that God does it. You see, prayer is less about getting something from God and more about giving something to God. You give him your gratitude. 
You give him your thankfulness that he, that he knows best. You give him praise. You give him service from the heart of a servant. To glorify God is what you are called. Remember our word, zakah. It's the word for male that God used in, in Genesis 127 when he says he created a male and female. The word male is zakah. Zakah was the assistant to a king that brought remembrance that the king was there. Now, I know these benefits sound pretty theological. And what I want to do with you is I want to go over five benefits that you could receive. They're really five fruits of what I just read to you in Psalm 103 that we can understand a little greater and be motivated and pumped to know that these will grow in our life the more we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Well, what do these ben benefits look like? Well, that's a good question. And if you're around MBM, you may have heard them before. But again, I want to paint the picture for you of what this man looks like. Their external evidence of an internal freedom won at the cross. Christ won it at the cross. You have the rewards and benefit. Two, uh, twofold here. We will see the rewards that God says is ours to have as we take his examples from the men in scripture. And uh, we also examine ourselves because the Bible tells us in many places to examine ourselves. Constantly stick a spiritual thermometer in our mouth and uh, take our spiritual temperature. See how we're doing. How's our spiritual receptivity? Because that's how God works through us. The more receptive and the more spiritually fit you are, the more you'll experience these benefits. First benefit is a contented man. And uh, I could give you my whole story here of being a discontented man my whole life and why I was always like that and still really struggle with discontentment today. But if but I've done study and I've asked the Lord, Lord, help me feel this reward. This is a fruit of my loving you, but it's a fruit of what you've done at the cross in me. The contented man is a kissing cousin of peace that rules a man's life, the peace that rules, the peace that protects your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, it tells us in Philippians 4. Paul writes in a jail cell in, in, in Philippians 4 to say that he was content with little or much because he knows what it's like to have a little. He knows what it's like to have a much. <laughs> you, you see, Paul knew that contentment is not in getting what you want, but in wanting what God gives. This fruit of a man was shown in David, where David asked God, go ahead, search me. I'm content with whatever you find in me, because I love you. I trust you. You'll never judge me. You love me greater than any father ever loved a son. This is also the spirit of a sound mind talked about in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7. It's the, it's the sound mind that battles fear and anxiousness. So contentment is number one. Number two, the consistent man. This is the guy who's reliable as sunrise. He suits up and shows up for his family and brothers. The, it's the one we can count on. Let me tell you what he looks a little like. He looks like Sonny Yang. He looks like Sonny Yang. This is the guy with a spirit of self-control that allows him to say no to ungodliness. This is, this is the, the spirit of self-control that allows a man to say no to all the questions in his life from other people, not overbooking himself and making himself a neurotic. <laughs> and it says yes to kindness gentleness. These are two powerful traits of biblical manhood. God is kind, but don't ever mistake God's kindness and love and gentleness for weakness. Number three, the confident man. This confident man is rooted in grace as he's got a Christian swagger to him because he knows that he doesn't 
have to know. He knows that he doesn't need to be certain about everything. This man is uh, sitting there staring at his big brother Jesus for anything. And Father God, who owns the place, it reminds me in Hebrews where it says, boldly come to the throne. You see, your confidence is not in getting everything done in succeeding in everything you do. Your confidence is you having free access to the God of this world, who's the blesser of this world, who gives you, and you need to remember this, who gives you the ability to create wealth and success in your life, if that time is your time. Because his will has to line up according to that. And his will is usually, as we spoke about last week, his will usually comes from what we saw, his will usually comes from the spiritual receptivity of not only Israel last week, but you and I today. How mature are we? A man uh, flew to Calcutta uh, in, um, in a time when uh, Mother Teresa lived and uh, had her ministry there. This man was a strong man. He was a godly man. He was a, a loving man. And he went over to Mother Teresa and he said, he said, Mother Teresa, he goes, could you pray for me? She says, what shall I pray for you, my son? And uh, he, said to, he said to her that I can be certain of my calling. And she said, no, she goes, I'll never pray for certainty for you. I'll pray for courage to trust God for you. Courage to trust God. That's what you need. You don't need certainty. And you see, that courageous man is our fourth one. It's the one who's Rakazak, the Israeli battle cry, the Hebrew battle cry for strong and courageous. His courage may not be in winning a game in the, in the bottom of the ninth or even saving someone from distress, but it's grounded in his trust in Christ. Courage and trust are synonymous. You see, the bravest moments of a man's life is when he chooses to trust and obey God when all else screams not to. He possesses a sacrificial spirit of love, for courage is simply love turned inside out. Rest is the complete man. The complete man includes all previous marks of the free man. The word complete and mature are synonymous in scripture. This is the man who's replaced his orphan heart, meaning a man that always seems to have to prove and protect himself with the heart of a son who knows who he is in Christ Jesus. He knows this. Colossians 1.8. Oh, I'm sorry. Colossians 1.28. The apostle Paul states his mission and his guy's mission. He says this. We proclaim him admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom so that we may present every man complete in Christ. Present every man complete in Christ. That is a picture of what the man who strengthens himself in the Lord looks like. That is the picture. And I want to paint that picture. And your first question is, well, then, okay, I get it. I get it, and I feel it. I see it. I want those rewards. What do I got to do? Well, that's a great, uh, great question, and I'll speak a little about that uh, when I come back. Brother Joe? Thank you, Pastor. Wow, great opening up to a, a, a series. Uh, Coach Carlos, I'm going to hand it over to you, brother. Good morning, good morning, men. How are you? Uh, great opening, as uh, Coach Joe just said, and uh, summarizing uh, fruits and benefits. Wow, wow, a lot to chew on, and it's a wonderful morning. Uh, my task is to uh, take up an offering for the ministry, and uh, I am first going to applaud you men that have joined us this morning, and uh, do so each and every week. We know that it's not a, a light task to wake up at uh, seven o'clock in the morning and uh, and praise and worship God. It should be, but I'll be honest, I don't think it's as easy as it sounds. So uh, kudos to all of the men that are on the, uh, 
online with us this morning. So, um, uh, MDN is a 501c3 corporation. Uh, your donations will be acknowledged at the uh, end of the year, and we certainly uh, we certainly appreciate monies that uh, benefit the ministry and uh, and that we use. We need to, uh, to keep going with what uh, God wants. Uh, says uh, there are three ways that we talk of giving. You can. See them, the right corner, it says to text, uh, the number 833-500-4685 on your phone, smartphone and text in, put in the word give and follow the instructions. You can go online, mensdiscipleshipnetwork.com. Uh, again, go to the donate button and follow the instructions. You certainly can write a check and send it into uh, 27 Grand Avenue in Farmingdale, New York. You see the, the address at the bottom. And at the end of uh, the session, as uh, Brother Sonny does each and every week, you will get uh, an email to you uh, that makes it as easy as possible and summarizes the various things that I've talked about. So uh, we thank you. Thank you in advance for uh, your kind donations. And uh, we, we, we pray that this is a blessing to you as it is to me. And uh, I'm going to turn back over to uh, Coach Joe. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Pastor, we had some good uh, yeah. guys. If you missed some of the key scriptures for today, just go to the chat box. They are in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalm 103, 1 to 5 was where we started. We went to a couple of the scriptures. So just look right through there. You guys brought up some good things here. Um, this one caught my eye from Raphael. I think contentment comes from our relationship to what is going on around us rather than our reaction to it. Want to approach that, Pastor Scott? Uh, contentment comes from our relationship to what is going on around us rather uh, than, rather than yeah. our reaction to it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Contentment, contentment is focusing on the Father in that in those relationships. Contentment, a, a contented man switches his purposes around. A contented man uh, has redefined purpose in his life. A contented man is a guy who's finally getting it that he was born to glorify God in his business, in his marriage, those are all things we get to do and get, we get to live in nice, nice apartments and homes. We get to drive nice cars. I love cars. Okay. But, but my contentment is not in getting the best car because the best car requires me to do less for God in my personal life. So my contentment comes from getting the car that God says he wants to give me. Do I ask him for a Ferrari every month? No, but I wouldn't mind having one and driving one, but the, then uh, I get in trouble probably. But uh, I love cars, but my contentment is the car do I got, I'm just so happy with. You know, the wife that I have, let's talk about a tough subject with uh, our wives. Are we content with our wives and our marriage? Turn the man in a box next to you and say, I think he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till we're back together again. Yeah, uh, right. We'll keep this going also. <clears throat> but, but are you content in your marriage? When you look at your wife, do you feel grieved, grumpy, good, or great? Mm. Well, you see, when God is there, you're content with your relationship because that's it. There's no option to leave. You and her are now one, even if you're a cranky one, all right? You lose your temper, you get angry with her, but that's who you have to live with, that God calls you one. That's like looking at your right arm. That's like looking at your right arm, being mad at it. And it's a little too skinny, so I hate it. It's a little too fat, I don't like it. I don't like the color of it. I got dots popping up in my arm. What? No, 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 that's your arm. God loves you, man of God. He loves you and your spouse. 
Mm. Does contentment work out in your marriage? I find that the more responsibility I take on and the more I submit to the oneness of our relationship, not to my wife directly, but to the oneness of our relationship, the more content I am with my marriage. I submit to the oneness. I believe with all my heart that the actions are submit to the word of God, surrender to the will of God, and succeed. You see, it is vital that we submit. Some of you may think that you may be submitting to your wife and they have to submit to us. We don't submit to them. I don't know where you got that from. We've never taught it here. And it's a false teaching. Ephesians 5.21 says this, submit to each other. Your wife is in each other. <laughs> She's in each other. Next verse where it says in 22, wives submit to your husbands. It's simply saying what, what the 20, uh, first verse just said. We have the roughest part as men. Uh, I'm talking about this because I believe the Holy Spirit led me here. Uh, with uh, some of your discontent in, with your relationships. Um, I believe that we really need to look at our spouses and receive the responsibility God gave you as the head of the home, the spiritual head. And you are the head. It says that in scripture there. But if you don't know that, you'll never strengthen yourself in the Lord. A lot of our strength comes when our fam uh, is needed is when our family disappoints us. It's when we lose the deal at work. How do you strengthen yourself in the Lord? Well, we're going to talk about that over the next few weeks. Over the next, uh, I believe it's uh, eight weeks, we're going to be talking about this as, as we run through how do we do that. How do we do that? For those of you who have the weapons manual, I would recommend that you bring it with you. Uh, bring it with you to this study. Uh, you don't definitely need it. For those of you who'd like one, you could uh, call the office or email the office. We'll get it over to you. But it'll help you much greater if you can know how to strengthen yourself in the Lord as you're watching and seeing him using the manual as well as uh, the video in the morning. Pastor Gary, are you on with us? I am, Pastor Scott. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Gary, could you uh, give us some comments? Well, I appreciate this morning's introduction uh, to the weapons study that we're going to be doing moving forward. And uh, being content, especially, I think that that was so good that we focused on that because I think as men, that's that's not an easy uh, thing to achieve uh, for us. When you were talking about our wives, Pastor Scott, um, I know that you know when Tiger Woods a few years back, you know, was caught in infidelity, a lot of men thought to themselves, "How is that possible when you have this absolutely gorgeous knockout model?" you know, of a wife. <laughs> and yet here you are, you know, uh, fooling around, you know, with others when that's what, you know, you have at home. And uh, it really reminded me this morning that being content has less to do with, uh, you know, the attributes or qualities of your wife and more to do with the uh, attributes and qualities of your own heart. And uh, I thought that was just a good reminder, you know, for myself, uh, in all areas, you know, to be thankful uh, for what God has given us and for, um, you know, what, what he wants to do in us and through us uh, in our relationship, you know, with our wives. And um, he, he knew uh, before you were married, before I was married, uh, you know, who we would be with. And he has a, a great purpose and plan uh, and blessing uh, that can come out of that, that uh, covenant. So uh, thanks for that reminder, Pastor Scott. 
Wonderful. Yeah, we, we, we landed on contentment for some reason. Uh, I believe the Holy Spirit wanted that. Uh, but again, the rewards of God are in a man's life that he can see and feel is contentment and consistency. I mean, you ever beat yourself up for stopping and stopping things? You ever beat yourself up for missing Thursday mornings <laughs> and getting up a little late and watching watching a, a television show the night before and you start beating yourself up? I got great news for you. God never thinks that way. God never goes, oh, man, Joey didn't make it this morning. I cannot believe he watched that television show last night instead of waking up with me. God does not <laughs> think that way. You see, God says, my ways are not your ways. Now, he's not bragging that he's so much better than you, although he is. He's not bragging that he's perfect, although he is. He's bra If you look in Isaiah, when he says that in Isaiah 53, my ways are not your ways. My, my thoughts are not your thoughts. He's talking about his love for you. Mm. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about his love for you. And man of God, I want you to feel what it's like to strengthen yourselves in the Lord. Yes, those are the five, those five rewards of what you should be looking for in these next weeks. And what we're going to do is we're going to travel over to 2 Corinthians 10.4 next week. And we're going to start with what Paul says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God in the pulling down of strongholds. A stronghold is a lie believed, then lived. Say that to the guy next to you. A lie believed, then lived. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to learn how to pull down strongholds using the acronym of weapons. And some of you who've have heard of weapons have been through weapons. You're gonna get you're gonna get fresh flavor of this in this new series, strengthening yourself in the Lord. I am so excited what God's gonna do. And here's what I'm gonna leave with you: We want you men to focus on God's love this week. That is the strength and courage is love turned inside. That is the strength of God. Now, when I grew in the faith, and still to this day, when I think God loves me, it's not enough. It doesn't strengthen me. I have to go a step further. When I think of God's love, I have to say, Father, you accept me for who I am. All faults. You feel me for everything I've done, what I'm doing today, and what I'll do tomorrow. Lord, I love you. Thank you for accepting me. He affirms and approves of me. He affirms and approves of me. I, <laughs> he's okay. He laughs at my dumb jokes. He laughs at your dumb jokes. He thinks you're actually cute. He gets a kick out of your, your, your mannerisms. <laughs> he has affection for you that your earthly father was never able to give you. It's an affection so large that you'll spend your whole eternity trying to receive it. Mm. He doesn't leave you there. He has aspiration. He's going to give you a mission and a vision and a greater purpose in life than just going to work and making money and paying the mortgage, than just raising a family. And that's a good vision, raising a family. But the greater vision, including family, including brotherhood, is glorifying God and making his name known. He's going to give you aspiration. That word aspiration in the Greek is the number one Greek word that Greeks use today for motivation. Isn't that amazing? Wow. wow. And lastly, he, give, he gives you accountability with his word and the brotherhood surrounding you. And as we close, I would just ask that you consider SEAL team. And if you don't know what that is, we, we taught that last month. That's really simply just getting with a couple of brothers, anywhere from two to four other men that uh, you can you can grow in the Lord with. You're not conforming with them. You're transforming with them. You see, you're transforming your life with them into these 
into these five areas, contentment, consistency, confidence, courage, and a complete man that Paul tells us we will be when, we're pre they, when we are presented to Christ. Father God, I thank you for this time today. I ask in Jesus' name that you not only bless the works of these, man, these men's hands, but I ask that you swell their hearts, Lord, with your acceptance, with your approval and your affection of, for them, Lord God. Let each man know that this affection runs past any sin. It's a love that, it's a love that not only conquers all sin, it strengthens the man to come out of sin. Because Lord, we were not wired to obey you, but you gave us the power to obey you by changing our hearts in your love. Man of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his grace, which we spoke about all day today, be so sufficient that it fills up your tank and everything you need. May his face turn towards you and give you success in everything you put your hands to. In your job, with your family, with your friends this week. And of course, your mission in making his name famous. And may you have the peace that passes all understanding and guards your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.